Hello guys, sorry about that. For some reason all of my browser all of my browsers just completely closed on me as soon as I pressed the, the transition button. So I'm trying to put them back all up. But yeah. Let's see, I think I've got most things. Um yeah, let's see. Who's online today? I'm seeing Zark, I'm seeing Tefram, Kai. Cozy Fanatuti, Whitpack, Beware of Pixels. Thanks guys for joining in. Looks like I've got 20 people on tonight. Awesome, awesome, awesome possum. Let's see, okay. So tonight we'll be doing one of the keyboards I've gotten way back in the day. It was kind of a, uh... oh, hey, Cozy, thanks for subscribing, man. Subscribed for eight months total, dang, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, Cozy, I'm using one of your coasters again, as usual. Speaking of coasters, let's see if my scene transition will work out correctly. Oh, perfect. Good, good, good. So far, so good, guys. There we go. Tonight's beverage of choice, because I'm putting VIA support into a board, I'm going to be drinking rosé. Why rosé? Mainly because Olivia, one of the main developers behind Via, is a very big fan of rose gold. So I figured I'd drink something that's more akin to her, I guess. <laughs> Let me turn on my lights here. There we go. We'll start off with the glass of rosé today. Why Yellowtail? Because Wilba, another developer for Via, is from Australia. And I believe Zark is from Australia as well. Duncan Yo-Yo says, hello, everyone. Well, hello to you, too. Let's see, I haven't drank anything on stream for a very long time because of my cold, but I'm back at it. So let's play, play some tunes for you guys. Boom. Woodpack says, is that PBT Heavy Industry? No, it is not. This is GMK Serica with a TX keycap on the top left. Beware Pixels has Yellowtail Moscato. Mm. Zark says, is that a euphemism? No, it is not. <laughs> Ordered one WT60D. Very excited to get your hands on it. Congratulations, man. Janky says flu-like symptoms. <laughs> no, I have no flu-like symptoms anymore. But coincidentally, a large number of my coworkers do. People are just getting sick left and right. It sucks. All of this coronavirus stuff, it's happening during flu season. So there's really no way to to know if you have corona or not. All right, let's see, let me, oh yeah. So before I start the shows, I typically like to show off what I've gotten in the mail. Um, didn't really get much this week, but I did show off the keycap set that I got this past Saturday. This is also the build I did this past Saturday. Dolch Pack 60. I put on GMK Olive on it. You know, so I'm not... If you guys joined my stream last last evening, you know that I don't actually like GMK Olive on Dolch. So at some time in the near future, I'll take it off. I think this might work better on a board like that. Who knows, who knows. Woodpack says, permission to summon some chicken tendies for dinner? Sure, why not? Why not? Yeah, the board that we'll be doing tonight is the Doro 67. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what makes this board so special. Number one, it was a very, whatchamacallit, a very ambitious group buy. Super ambitious to the fact that it was one guy trying to run a group buy of over 300 units. 
So not, not only was the case going to be manufactured, or not only was he going to design the case, but apparently he also designed the PCB. And if I'm not mistaken, he was a recent college grad. So, well, actually, at the time, I believe he was on his way to graduating. So 300 units, being a first time group by runner and graduating from college, there was, there was some trepidation going into the group by, but we believe that he could do it. We believe that he could do it. Um, long story short, a lot of people who joined the group by in 2018 are still waiting for their boards. And yeah, like I'm, I'm not talking like one, two, maybe 10 people, but I'd, I'd say like a hundred people are missing it. And on top of that, the people who did get their boards, people who did get their boards, a majority of us have broken PCBs. Um, more notably, the RGB PCB, the one that has RGB in switch, our RGBs are broken. And like mine, mine came to me broken, so I had to reflow a lot of it. But check it out. Just, I'm not sure if you guys can see it on stream. Do you notice my very bottom row right under my menu key? Actually, even this entire bottom row, you can see the lights are flickering. So that's after me trying to repair it. it. It was fine for a good number of months. And then just just today, actually, as I pulled it out for the stream, I checked it out and it's flickering again. So who knows? Who knows if this PCB will ever be fixed? The other interesting thing about this board um, is that this was run around the same time as the Dolch.CR and I ported both boards into QMK. Sark says down and right arrow keys are screwed too. Actually, no. Oh wait, it's working now. <laughs> it's working now. That's so strange. But yeah, I was the one who ported both boards into QMK this and the dolch.cr and in the middle of me porting the dolch.cr I was like this matrix looks awfully familiar hmm. and yeah exact same switch matrix exact same code you can take the code for the Doro 67 flash it on the dolch.cr and it will work perfectly no problems at all and of course vice versa so that was one of the nights where, where like, I'm like, okay, uh, I'm not going to finish the port. Everyone just take your Doro 67 and flash it on. Right now, there are some third party attempts in order to replicate this PCV. I think Martin Watt, if you guys are familiar with him, he's designed the board such as the Plane 60 and other boards in our hobby. He's taken it upon himself or by with gentle nudging from the Doro community to remake the PCB. So I am quite excited about that. He seems to be the, the person to go to if you want your board fixed or fixed by having a new PCB made. <laughs> yeah. So here, let, let me show a little bit more about this board. If you think you've seen this before, it is very much similar to the Rama M65A, the Koryu, and the new Rama M65B. The only difference is that it's not hot swap and it's not top mount. It's an integrated plate. But it looks very much the same. And USB-C, middle. And you had the option to have a PVD coated brass bottom weight and I'm going to show you guys something really ugly <laughs> you see that you see that that is my fingerprint stained brass weight and the reason why I don't mind this is because if you look close enough you'll see that this 
brass weight is actually pretty scratched up. And it came to me this way. Yeah, it came to me this way. So yeah, you could say that this group buy didn't really turn out well. Um, both Yan and I have one, I believe. And we both have like the same switches on it. These are Helios. Woodpacks, that looks like one of the novelties for GMK Merlin. The novelty for GMK Merlin is actually the QMK logo. I guess that looks kind of similar to it, but that's the Backprop Studios logo. Bottom never gets seen anyway, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Um, I've used this board a few times. It's probably one of my only boards that still uses as A. I like it. It's, it's not a bad board. It's just, it's got history. Yeah, once once Martin What is done with, with the PCBs, I'm definitely purchasing one just because this does worry me. Kai says you don't like SA anymore. Yeah, I don't. Gary says, I had to stuff mine with neoprene and sorbethane because it sounds too hollow. Yeah, I think I stuffed this with just regular drawer liner. Zark says he got MDA Big Bang this morning. That is one profile that I've never really got a chance to type much on. Like I've typed on it at, at like meetups, but how much time can you really invest in playing around at, at like the meetup, right? But yeah, despite all of the issues with this board, I actually quite like it. This is one of my favorite 65s. But knowing Mar Martin Watts design, he's gonna have ESD protection and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna definitely be buying one of those yeah that looks very much like an m65 oh yeah and this is max key ashen I think this was round one for Max Key Ashen. I think there were 85 bucks, I think. MDA is basically sculpted XDA, not DSA. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Will, will stuff work out for me tonight with all my windows crashing? La, la -dee da Let me play around here for a sec. Here, I'm gonna plug it in. Let us show, oh good, it's still working. Let's turn on all our RGBs. There we go. Turn on all the RGBs. Well, I figured out my window situations and that OBS for some reason closed to everything. Zark says, still a bunch of differences, but that's as close a comparison as I can make. Awesome. Mm, let's see. Let's change the color a bit more. There you go, that's a lot more noticeable. Okay. Give me a moment, guys, while I figure out my window situation. When am I popping my arm cherry? What do you mean?
Ah, great. See? So it happened again. <laughs> it happened again. That's what happened. All right. I see what happened here. Okay, let me... Let me remove that. There we go. Ari says, I was watching your... I was watching your porting Noah VOD, so this is great timing so I can add Via to my Doro. You have a Doro too. Oh yeah, you... You, you did say that earlier. Let's see. All right. Okay. I think I got it. I think I got it. All right, guys. So if you guys have never used VIA before, VIA is a GUI for the QMK firmware. There's a lot of misconception that VIA is a different firmware, that it's a different tool. Well, no, it's not a different firmware. It's not a firmware, it's a GUI. Um, yes, it is a different tool. Um, kind of like how QMK Configurator kind of works like a GUI for the firmware. VIA does that too, except the cool thing about VIA is as you change it in the GUI, those changes will immediately reflect back onto your board. No more flashing, no more, you know, loading up a firmware file, editing it via text, yada, yada, yada. All that is done automatically. So tonight, um, I'm gonna try and get Via working on this. Like I'm, I'm basically working through all the boards in my possession and hopefully I'll get all of them Via supported. So yeah, without further ado, let's talk about what's required. Okay, let's do that. Boom. Okay. Mm, it's kind of big or kind of small, I mean. There we go. Okay. So to get a board into VIA, there are two parts. The first part is the QMK firmware part. And the second part is the VIA part. For QMK firmware, it's as easy as creating your own key map called VIA and turning on VIA. That's pretty much it. So we're, we're gonna start there and then we'll move on to the QMK, to, to the VIA part after that. All right, let's see. Okay, so the board that I have is the RGB can tell yeah he had a separate PCB just for the RGB support so it PCBs were all over the place which is probably what confused the hell out of him that he just got tired of the group by Kigan says via is amazing Golov Golov causes how does it do it like dumping config file onto the EEPROM or something and the firmware actively reads it it puts the key map onto the EEPROM. Guess it'll make sense after after watching this. Zark says it stores the key map definitions in EEPROM, yes. All right, okay, so the first things first is you have to make sure that you find your keyboard. And right now this board only has a default key map. What I like to do is just copy the default key map over Aries subscribing with Twitch Prime. Thank you so much. Right. And of course, the important thing is you need to rename the key map as VIA. Couple things to do right off the bat is you probably want to take off all this. I don't even know why I included this in the default. But yeah, let's take that out. We don't need that. We don't need that. Um, VIA only supports up to four layers. And I think the reason behind that is most boards are using an Atmega32U4. And because you're storing the key maps on the EEPROM, it just takes up so much space. So they put a hard limit on four. But because of that, 
Wilbur has specified that we actually define all four key maps. So we're just gonna take care of all that. Um, what they are, just make sure that you put a sane key map on it, you know? Zark says, some can only do three if the size of the matrix is big. That, that is very true, because I'm trying to get the TC, the duck TC V3 into QMK, and I'm encountering issues with the VIA key map, and I haven't quite explored it yet. So, yeah. Hopefully, I think Heinebush encountered that too when he tried to put the HBCP or whatever that board was. Basically, I'm just emptying everything out here. Do, do, do. Yeah, make sure your VIA key map still has a reset key in it. All right, let's see. Did I do this correctly or did I miss something? Make Doro 67 slash RGB colon via. All right, looks good. Looks good. Titan says his 1800. Yeah, I think that's his 1800 HBCP. I don't actually own any Heine boards. Actually, no, that's not true. He did send me a PCV for my TGR Jane, which I have yet to build. So hopefully in the near future, I will have that. So yeah, um, Wilbur has just specified that all four are defined as long as, as, long as you can do it. Um, so I don't really, I actually only ever use up to three layers. So just make the extra two layers blank if you want. Let's see, do we need anything here? Nope, we don't actually need a config file. And read me. Sure, we'll, we'll keep the read me. But the important thing here, the important thing here is that you need a rules.mk file. So make that rules.mk, like so. And what needs to go in here are two lines. Bah. The first line is via underscore enable all caps equals yes. And any guesses what this line does? If you're thinking that it enables via, you're 100% correct. <laughs> and the second line that is recommended but not um, mandatory is LTO underscore enable, all caps again equals yes. What this stands for is link time optimization. It makes sure that it compiles your firmware in the most optimized fashion available. And this usually leads to a smaller firmware size, which is better in some senses. So we wanna turn that on, especially if your board is really, really big and you've got a giant matrix Though in the case of the duck TCV3 that I'm still trying to work on, that did not help me. So I, I have to think of like other ways. But the most important part here, like like right now you are you are pretty much done. But the way VIA works, the way VIA works is it looks at your your board's vendor ID and your product ID. These two guys. And Bia's like, oh, okay, that board is a Doro 67. Okay, let's load up the, the GUI, so to say, for the Doro 67. If you have a different vendor ID, a different product ID, or something that already exists, Bia's gonna look at your board and be like, hmm, that is a 1-up 60, <laughs> you know? So you need to make sure that this is well-defined. 
also, you can't just make this up, you know? Well, you can, but <laughs> but this is quote unquote regulated by USB IF. Um, these are all registered numbers. If you actually want an official registration to have your own vendor ID, product ID, you can cough up $5,000 and USB IF will be like, great, here you go. Here is your vendor ID. You'll be listed everywhere that you are the owner of this vendor ID. Um, we don't have $5,000. And even if you guys all donated so that all my bits and subscriptions equaled $5,000, it still wouldn't make a difference because we have so many boards already. Our best course of action is to pick a vendor ID, then check then check it out on like USB IF to see if it works or not. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to assume that vendor ID, actually, let's just keep it feed. Vendor ID feed is legit and product ID, let's just call it 8887 or 6700. This is just for demonstration purposes only. I still have to check this against USB IF. But here, let's just do. Actually, let's do Backprop Studios. Yeah, let's do that. Let's try to at least make something. Okay. So with this, you should be done. Run your make command. Check to make sure that everything works. Zark says use vid 0x f055. Okay, that's, that's as good a number as any. Okay, we're gonna have to compile it again. There we go. Oh, really? Interesting, I did not know that. Sure, I guess we'll use that for now. Um, Tefram, so Tefram was asking earlier about LTO. LTO is not only for VIA, okay. So for example, let's take a look at that, see? 83%. 4,660 bytes free. If I were to take out the LTO enable line, like so, my firmware size should climb up to 95 percent, 1,176 bytes free. So it fills it up by about 10 percent more. Of course, this is relative. See, from 83% full, jumped up to 95% full. So you do want to have LTO enabled. Let's make firmware again. Sark said it's not legit, it's convention. Ah, interesting. There we go, I'm back down to 83% full, so that's good. That's good. So with this, you, you have your VIA hex file, which you can then flash onto your keyboard. Of course, just having this VIA hex file is not sufficient for VIA to work. You know what else is not sufficient? An empty glass. So we will be pouring a glass of port next. <laughs> Tonight I'm drinking the Quinta Das Carvalhas. Um, I've been reading, I've been learning more about port that once opened, like port can be stored for a very, very long time just because it's a fortified wine. It's, it's fortified with lots of sugars. Um, once you buy the bottle, you can, you can keep it for decades. But apparently once you open it, like I have done so, you should probably drink it within a few weeks. And I've already had this bottle for, oh gosh, about three weeks now. I've, I've only gone through half of it, so I gotta hurry up here. 
I gotta hurry up here. Here, let's be a little bit more generous tonight. A fuller glass. I have ads house. What mouse pad is that? This is a Cherry MX datasheet type mouse pad. Purchasable on keyclock.com. Well, I purchased it in 2015, so he probably doesn't have it anymore. I have ad. Thanks for following, man. Hmm. No, I like it. Um, I've started using double mouse pads lately. Oh. Oh. 159, it's actually exclamation point drink. I don't use exclamation point port. <laughs> and yeah, I have the Vancouver Mech Meetup mouse pad under it. Also black. This is probably the thinnest mouse pad that I've ever gotten. But I figured it would it would work as, as a secondary mouse pad. All right, let's see. Okay, now that we have the firmware, now that we have the firmware, we need to create the, the JSON file for VIA. And give me a moment while I set up my screen again. Let's do this. We are going to go to... Ah, there we go. Cthulhu says, so the LEDs on my Doro started working again when I rebuilt it with creams a couple weeks ago. Hmm. I've heard lots of good things about creams. I guess creams do restore all of your LEDs as well. Tfue must be onto something. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, um, for those people who watched the original build stream, like there were a couple, a couple people more knowledgeable about TCB design than me. And I remember a lot of people commenting that the way he did it having a controller per switch was very, not only was it more costly, but it was also more prone to error. So hopefully Martin Watt does something else. I don't think he's ever made an in-switch RGB PCB. So this might be, th this might be new for him too. Who knows, who knows? All right, guys, let me continue doing what I said I was doing. Okay. First and foremost, uh, if you guys want to follow along with me and actually read through documentation, all of that info is on caniusevia.com, which I am now posting into the chat. All I'm doing, all I'm doing, all I've done already is in the documentation section. So click on docs up here, top left. It'll talk about what what's needed for VIA and what's needed for the firmware. So we are going to do the VIA portion now. For the VIA portion, all you really need to know is knowledge about Keyboard Layout Editor. Keyboard Layout Editor is one of the oldest tools in our community. And despite its vast usage, um, because of licensing and stuff, no one can quote unquote, legally fork it and make a new one. So it still has a bunch of bugs. None of the PRs that were submitted to it have ever been merged in. But yeah, it's still still a very important tool. But what do we want to do here? What we want to do is remake this layout right here. This layout right here is remake it in Keyboard Layout Editor. Well, let's do that. Do we have, let's start with the default 60. That looks good. And we will add a couple one U keys for that rightmost column. Cthulhu says the PCB in my door right now is the second one I got sent. 
And still non-working LEDs, man. I'm sorry, man. That group buy was such a, such a disaster. Okay, we got that. Shift key was 1.75. And then let's do three 1.25 views, a 6.25, two 1.25s, great. Oh wait, I said 1.25s, huh? I meant 1, 1U one for the arrow keys. All right. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, so basically, once again, you're trying to emulate what your actual layout is. Um, in this case, we actually have a name for this layout. In QMK, we call this the layout underscore 65 underscore ANSI underscore blocker, which in my opinion is the superior layout for 65%. It's commonly used by boards such as the Mass Drop Alt, the E6.5, the Canoe, um, one of the Noxery boards, what else? And quite a few others. I don't know all of them off the top of my head. Okay. The next stage, the next part of this is that we need to be able to see both the code. How is your port queue? My port queue? Um, if you're talking about the port to drink, this is the only bottle of port that I have at the home. I'm trying not to stock up too much on them. <laughs> You know, and plus I'm trying, ever since I started this series, I've been drinking a lot more. So I'm only trying to drink on Tuesdays. <laughs> Blue Luster says, hi Merlin. 159 says, OMG Merlin, please. <laughs> QMK. Um, I have two more boards in my port queue, actually. Yeah, my um, porting services are all free. All I request is that you pay for shipping to and from me. And if you are so inclined to tip me on stream while I'm porting your board. 159 says, okay, we'll DM you. Hmm, interesting. What board is this? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's get back to what I'm supposed to be doing here. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm going to have to set up my, my screens again because the next stage you need to be able to see the KLE and the code. So let's do this. Let's do this. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. Can do this. Zark says those three two eights literally just arrived. You will need to get back to me. Oh look at that. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. We got it. Okay, that's fine. Looks like chat is covering my terminal window, but that's fine. You don't really need to see the terminal window. No need to see the terminal window. Okay, fair. The, the next part of this, the next part of this is you need to pay attention to your keyboards.h file. In this case, it is the RGB.h. This guy right here that you're seeing, this is the layout macro. And the way, the reason why we wanna pay attention to this is that we need to populate this KLE with all the information that you extract from config.h. But let me clear out all these legends first. Ah. 
Why are things not working for me today? There we go. Remove all legends. Remove all legends. Okay. So here we go. This is what we need to pay attention to. If you haven't seen a layout macro before like this, basically the top half is your physical matrix and your bottom half is your electrical matrix. Um, you only have to pay attention to the physical matrix up here. You can ignore the electrical matrix. All of these little guys here, K stands for key. The first number stands for the row number. Second number stands for the column number. And this directly ties to what pins are used. But once again, you don't even need to pay attention to that. What you want to do is emulate this. So let's see, we can see that the top row is zero, bottom row is four. We can take a quick shortcut. You need the top legend, the top leftmost legend. So you want to do zero. I keep typing on the Doro when it's not even plugged in. I'm gonna... getting myself confused. <laughs> okay, you want zero, comma, zero. We'll fill out the rest later. This is just me taking a shortcut. What these numbers represent is row and column. So right now we're just filling up the rows for now. Four comma zero. 159 says Merlin tipsy already indeed. After two weeks of not drinking anything, a simple glass of wine is making me tipsy already. <laughs> Okay, so let's look at this layout macro again. You can see that all across the top row it's zero, and it goes all the way from the, the column, which is the second number, goes from zero all the way to nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Perfect. So now we can emulate that. Like I know in the layout macro, it, 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 it jumps from nine till A because it's hex. Well, not really, but we won't get into that tonight. So we're, we're just gonna, you know, type all this in. Zero, two, zero, three, zero, four, zero, five. I will spare you my counting and just count in my head. Just wait till you see Merlin screw up. Thirteen and fourteen. Fourteen. Oh, right. Okay. Row one goes from... Hey, it's the same thing. From zero through fourteen. This makes life easy. One, two, three. Oopsies. One, two, three. Four. Five. Six, seven. Oh yeah, I said I wasn't gonna be counting for you guys. I wish KLE had a easy way to increment these numbers, but as I said earlier, KLE cannot be modified anymore. Okay. Now we want to look at row 2, which goes from 0 all the way to 11. Goes what, 9, 10, 11. It skips 12, then 13, 14. So that I don't get confused, I'm going to start with 14 on the right here. 14, 13, skip in the 12. I can just do that, but I'm also trying to demonstrate how it's done, how it's supposed to be edited like that. To 11, to 10. Doesn't take much time. It's not like I have multiple layouts to do.
it's funny um so i believe the m65s were like wilba's design so when i first ported the doro into qmk wilba was like no merlin you've made it easier to do unofficial via <laughs> So before doing this, I actually reached out to Wilba and be like, hey, I knew, I know that you, you, you had issues with me doing this in the past. Are you cool? Are you cool with me porting the Doro or getting Via to support the Doro? And the answer is he's cool. He's cool with it. Um, as long as the requirements are met, anyone can put, can add Via support for a board of their choice. And the requirement, the major requirement is it needs to already be in QMK. And of course there are some issues with what microcontrollers are, are usable and which are not. All that stuff. Let's see, this third row skips one, but everything else is intact, perfect. Super simple here. If you guys have been following along since the beginning, you would have noticed that I haven't actually done any kind of coding at all. I've mainly employed usage of how QMK key maps were, were built in the past and having your dev environment set up so that you can actually make said key maps. All right, bottom row goes 40, 41, 42. 40, 41, 42, 43, 9, 10, 9, 10, 11 is skipped, but 12, 13, 14 are all there. All right, 12, 13, and 14. There we go, we got all of them. And just so I don't lose all this data, let us actually put some notes in. Keyboard name, Doro67 Via. And save. There we go. Aries says the multi has K48 for the split backspace. Should I label that key as K48? Yes. All right. Oh yeah. Um. Look. In QMK, the Doro 67 only has one layout for the RGB. I'm going to think that that is intentional. So we will stick with just one layout, which makes the VIA process entirely easy. Entirely easy. Yeah, just a quick review. You guys have seen. Basically, I've made it so that this... What you're seeing here completely matches the layout macro in your config.h file, the, the physical matrix of the layout macro. This needs to be an exact match. The next portion is actually putting this into VIA. So let me, let me set up some windows again. Let me set up some of these windows. So the VIA repo is a completely different repo than QMK. So yeah, so the, so the key map should still be committed to QMK, but this VIA stuff that I'm doing right now should be committed to VIA. Geekster says, hello. Well, hello to you too. Thanks for joining in. Let's see, what was I gonna do?
Yeah, just because we have one layout, um, I'm suspecting that this stream is gonna be short. In fact, we're coming up at just about an hour here. We should be good. All right. Okay. We're good. Ooh, see a couple more followers. Shadow and Bearded Nut. <laughs> thanks for thanks for following, man. Geekster has submitted an offer for a KN2. While typing on a Razor Black Widow, waiting very patiently. Well, that is a huge upgrade. <laughs> that is a huge, huge upgrade. All right, looks like I have the windows all set up just fine. Let me just, oh yeah, let me show what I have to do here. All right, so unlike QMK configurator, you're not copy and pasting the raw data here. What you want, what you want is actually to press the download button and you want to download the JSON. So once we've downloaded the JSON, we then want to open that up. Here we go. Here we go. So this is what the JSON looks like from that KLE that we just made. Um, for this to work in VIA, you actually want to take out this naming right here. So the naming is only useful for you. So you can go through all of your gists and figure out what, what, what exactly you did. So we, we can take that part out just like that. The next thing we want to do is go into the source directory and come up with the board here. Um, all of these are organized by vendor. So right now, the most logical place for all this is probably other, like so, other. Let's make a directory called Doro67. And within Doro67, you don't need to like make a directory for RGB or any of the other variants. We can simply just add a file called Doro 67 RGB.json. Right? It's all good and all. Okay. Olivia, thanks for joining in. Zafarian says, Hey Merlin, what's your favorite linear right now? The buttercreams? Um, 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 um. My favorite linear is. Let, let me grab it. Let me grab it. Olivia says, for some reason you thought there was a VIA port for Doro 67. Um, no, there's not. There's not even the VIA key map checked in yet. So figured might as well, might as well do it. But yeah, Zafarian, to answer your question, my favorite switch is currently on my Satisfaction 75. These are UHM WPE stems in a Gateron ink housing lubed with 205G0 and filmed with TX Films. Um, I would say this this is probably the smoothest switch I have ever typed on. Yeah, that feels really good. My only qualm with it is that it doesn't sound as good as a regular Gateron ink. And that's because of the UHM WP stem. Geekster says, patiently waiting for my Vince and Vintage Top Telios with the UHM WPE stems to come in. Olivia says, please bring it to Keycon so you can type on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's super smooth. You want to try them in person? 
Yeah, this, um, I would say this has exceeded my buttercreams that I had on my Sirius. Yeah, let's go put that away. Yeah, this... Oops. Helios feel slightly scratchy compared to them. You hope the vintage tops can counteract the UHM WP sound. Yeah, um, I think if, if I could rebuild my Satisfaction 75, I would definitely put cherry tops on it. Cause here, let's pull out another board, especially one that I just built. Here it is. This is also UHMWP, not the stem, but the housing. It's a tangerine R2 with cherry tops, and this is the sound that I like. Olivia, check it out. It's GMK Olive, an adult. <laughs> yeah, this is a sound that I like, and I would say these these are really, really smooth too. I would give my Satisfaction 75 combination a, a slight leg up, very, very slightly. Um, the reason being is I think I did a better job with the lube. <laughs> I don't know. The sound is worth it over the feel, IMO, says Geekster. All right, all right. Olivia says, thank you for your support. Oh yes, my, my support. <laughs> thank you for your support. All right, let's get back to what I was doing. Um, okay. So what we have here, we have created a Doro67 RGB.json file. And let me go back to what I was wanting to do, actually. Okay. So before I talk about what I'm going to do, let's look at the documentation. Okay. So this JSON file needs to have several properties in it. First of all, it needs to have a name. Next, it needs to have a vendor and product ID. This is why, well, this is what I was talking about that in the QMK firmware, this has to match your QMK firmware's config.h, vendor ID and product ID, and it needs to be unique. Next up, there needs to be lighting. Well, I guess that's optional because you can set it to none if you want. Now you have the matrix. So the matrix basically, it's not, you don't copy the matrix in, this, this is just the matrix dimensions. And then finally, the layouts. This is where you copy and paste that KLE JSON that I was talking about earlier. So all of this needs to come together. So when I do that, I actually, let's see. Let's just, here we go. Let's go here. Kakan says, may you use your magic wand on me? Sure. Actually, what is my wand? Oh, wait. Let me grab it. <laughs> It's not a wand per se, it's more of a staff. It's a keyboard staff. It's basically a walking stick with the keyboard engraved onto it. But yes, Kakan. Woo! <laughs> uh, I guess the magic words would be Expectus keyboardist. 
All right. Let's put that staff down. Okay. Oompa Loompa. 41 Raiders on mechs on deck. Holy crap. You guys, thanks for joining in. Amaranth PC, thanks for joining in. Thank you for your support, as always, mechs on decks. Oh yeah, if you guys don't know about mechs on decks, they're run by two fabulous individuals, Chewy and Osiris. Um, I would definitely pay attention to them, especially this month, because every Friday they have a stream about how Dixie's Mech Madness is going on. So yeah, tune in to them every Friday. If you're, if you like following up on, on Mech Madness. But yeah, 41 Raiders, thanks for joining in. Tonight I am putting via support onto one of my favorite boards, the Doro 67. Doro 67. Basically, it's a quote-unquote M65 or Koryu copy, except it's integrated plate, um, USB-C, middle USB-C, it has a brass bottom weight. Yeah, I know, it, it looks ugly, but the fingerprints hide all the scratches. Dolphin says, hey Merlin, what wine are you drinking? If you do exclamation point, drink. You will see what I'm drinking tonight. I am on to the 10 year tawny port right now. As I already finished a glass of the Yellowtail Rosé. So two, two glasses so far. Yeah, so right now I've finished the QMK former por portion. I am now doing the, the actual VIA portion. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Okay. So earlier I talked about all the properties that are involved. Um, I don't remember them. So what I like to do is I like to copy from an existing JSON file already, such as this, this right here. We're just going to borrow, copy, paste, and then remove the stuff we don't like, such as the key map portion. Let's take out the key map portion. Just remember to keep your brackets all correct, otherwise you will screw up your key map file. Yeah, you can actually, I'm pretty sure you can remove all this too. And remove layouts. No, wait, you can't remove layouts, can you? Actually, you know, why don't I copy and paste from a file that I've done, such as the 1UP60 HSE. There we go. Actually, what's another file I did? KBD67 Mark II would probably be most similar. Let's do that. Let's do that instead. Boom. Okay. So as always, remove that key map. Remove that key map. And let's call this Doro 67 RGB. Let's see. Ten strong. Hey, ten strong. Long time no see. It says Merlin, I was kind of bummed. You were right. If I went to the van meetup, I might have had the nicest board. But I'll come to the Seattle for you. If I'd brought the S75, well, to be fair, I've, I haven't uploaded my um, Vancouver meetup video yet, but, but there were some very nice boards there. I saw a, I saw a couple of TX boards. I saw two key cults. I saw, yeah, there was no S75. There was a couple, there were a couple duck boards. There were... What else were there? There was a lot of KBD fans boards. I think I saw an ANSI as well. And there was a, there was a TGR Jane as well. Yeah. It's funny though, cause the key cult board, 
the key called board, I saw it and I'm like, I've seen that board before. And I just kept staring at it for the longest time until the owner walked by. And I'm like, oh, I know you, you're from Seattle. Olivia says, any Zeno? Um, not any on display, but Mr. Zeal did hand me my Zeal. NPU3 Ma says, this is Varmelo? No, this is not Varmelo. This is Adoro67 from Backprop Studios. Very similar to what a Koyu or an M65 looks like. All right, okay. Let's go back to here. All right, so we need to look at some of the code here. Wait, that's TKC1800, oops. Let's take a look at, I've actually already forgotten. I've already forgotten what I set the vendor ID to. <laughs> Vendor ID was F055. F055. And the product ID was 6700. Perfect. Okay. See? F055 and 6700. Okay. So the reason why I wanted to copy the KBD67 is because this does it correctly. Um, for the lighting portion, if you put in none, like what the what the example says, it's not even gonna give you options to, to, to set RGB key codes. But you're like, Merlin, Merlin, doesn't your board have RGB? Why are you setting RGB to none? In VIA, VIA only supports three kinds of lighting. The first one is Wilba's own variant of the RGB lighting. Second one is regular QMK RGB underglow lighting. And the third is regular backlight lighting. In terms of the Doro 67 and the KBD 67, they use in switch per key RGB lighting, known in QMK as RGB matrix. VIA does not support that quite yet, but hopefully in the future, maybe, maybe. So for the time being, so that you can still control all, the, all your RGBs, you wanna put this line of code in. This property, lighting, you want it to extend none, key codes QMK. The next part is you need to look at the matrix. And if I remember correctly, the matrix was, what was the size? Five by 15, which is correct right here. And the next thing you wanna do is finally, you can take all this. This is the JSON from KLE. Take the whole thing. Take the whole thing, copy, copy it, and paste. Boom, boom diggity. All right. The cool thing is VIA can actually verify that you've done this correctly. So let's, let's bring that up. Let's bring that up. There we go. If you've never seen VIA before, this is VIA. This is VIA right here. What you want to do is, ah, it's, it's detecting my, my ZL60 right now. That's cool. But we, what we want to do is go to design, load. And you want to load, you want to load that file that you just did. So that would be, uh, where did I put it? Oh, I put it in other Doro 67. 
And if you did this correct, you should get a representation of what your keyboard looks like phys physically. So fingers crossed. Woo! It works, it works. But now I just realized that I made a grave mistake right here. What you're looking at right now is all black. The reason being is I didn't properly color my modifiers. So we gotta go back. We gotta go back to, to, oops. <laughs> we gotta go back to here and properly color all of these modifiers. Um, I believe it was seven, 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 seven. Okay, then we have to color all the modifiers. There we go. That looks about right. Make sure you save that. Let's download that JSON file again. Oops, that is not the correct file. Let me. Here we go. Let's replace that. Okay, that's replaced. Let's go back to VIA, load the file again, and we should get some color. Perfect, perfect, okay. So it's not showing the modifiers yet, but that escape key should have popped up. Dixie Mac, no idea what is happening. That makes the two of us. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still in the process of learning VIA, but so far I've been successful almost all the time. Fingers crossed. So let's see, let's see. Okay. Did I do this correctly? Let me take a look at my Yeah, I'm gonna have to do this. My escape key is not colored appropriately. Boom, okay, that works. The Ferrion says, do the buttercream sound better than the regular NK creams or is it just feel? Thank you in advance. Um, I would say it exceeds it because creams on their own feel really leathery. I, I talked to someone who knew more about material sciences than I do. Apparently the same the same material on the same material combined is not as smooth as different materials combined. You know, like of, of course if you pick two subpar materials, it wouldn't exceed something that was very, very slippery to begin with. So I've found for my butter creams specifically, if you used any other stem other than the cream stem it made it even smoother. So um, if you put UHM WPE stems on them, they will be super smooth as well. All right, guys, we are going to flash the board. We are gonna flash the board with my QMK firmware. And with any luck, this board will work in, QM in, in VIA. Well, let's try. Milk says, hello Merlin, hello to you too. 
Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember what my key map is, but I think I can do... I think it's just FN plus R. Yep, that put it in reset. And I flashed the board with the VIA key map. It's flashing. Whew, it's flashed. Okay, the board is now flashed. And now we will transition to here. Mm, okay, I don't I don't know how it's gonna react with two via supported boards, but I'm gonna plug in my Doro right now. And we'll see if it detects anything other than my Zeal 60. Because look, I've, I've got that loaded in. Let's plug it in now. Ooh, did detect something. Oh, here we go, look. It shows up, two, two little arrows show up when it detects something, so this is very promising. Doro 67 supported, yay! Talisman, thank you for your 111 bits. Yay, this makes me excited. Like, perfect, okay. Doro 67 is officially supported. Well, not officially, but I've got via support on it. Hooray, hooray. Okay. Here, let me show you some of the benefits of VIA. Let's play, let's play some. Oh yeah, you guys can make macros right now. See, but this is so easy to make a macro. Enter the macro you want to execute. Hello folks, this is a test. So then you take macro. There we go. See? So let's let's try it out. <laughs> Perfect. Talisman gifted a tier one sub to Tefram. Thanks, man. Whoa, 20 gift subs in the channel. Yeah, see, that is so much easier to make a macro, to make a text macro at least. And even more so, you can, see, tap enter at the end of the macro. All right, so you don't, sorry, I don't need to press enter anymore. Here, let me, let me pull something up here. Let's just do a, Here, let's try it again. I'm, I'm pressing the FN key and pressing Q where the macro is. What? That didn't work. Interesting. Maybe I need to reassign the key. Save. Let's try again. FN plus Q. Yeah, I think I might need to reassign the macro. Let's just reassign the macro. There we go. Well, that's odd. That's not working as intended, but it is printing out the text. Who knows? OG Righo says, what are those keycaps? These keycaps are max key ashen. One of the very first max key keycaps. Kakan says, everyone knows VIA is a government program to spy on us. Hmm. Well, rumor has it that Olivia is a government agent. 
Zark says, ha, my boards don't have a crystal. Save. <laughs> All right, well, it looks like I got this all working. Um, yeah, so the thing with adding via support is, number one, you need to file the QMK firmware PR, and then you have to file the via PR. And typically speaking, one of the check boxes for via is that you need to ensure that the board is supported in QMK already. So, for me at least, that from for my understanding, that means that the QMK firmware PR has to pass first before the VIA PR can be approved. So, you know, things things might not go as fast. Talisman says, "Yeah, but which government?" Hmm. Hmm. The rose gold government in terms of Olivia. <laughs> all right, all right, let's see. Let's see here. Mm -mm -mm -mm. What, what, what did I wanna do next? I wanted to do... Kakan says, I support Rose Gold. Sark says, it doesn't matter that much. Everyone goes to the Aussie government nowadays anyway. They're allowed to spy on US, UK, NZ, California. Oh man. Oh yeah, guys. Um. For those of you who are in my Discord server, you know that I maintain a list of ongoing group buys for keycaps and for keyboards. Um, today I found out that there was a keycap group buy that I missed, GMK Spirit. And apparently it's finishing in three days and I'm like, well that sucks. <laughs> Why am I talking about this? Um, Mainly because it's actually a group buy on Kono. And the good news, the good news is that GMK Merlin should be shipping to Kono early March. So it should be, should be on its way to Kono right now. Knock on wood. Dan Strong says, not gonna lie, I kind of noticed that you missed it, but it's spirit. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Ooh, a couple more follows. Cyber Menti, thanks for following. Potter, thanks for following. Potter, is that a Harry Potter ref reference? Knowing that this is the most magical channel in the community. <laughs> All right, guys, let's see, before I move on to the next step, I'm gonna take this moment just to talk about some of the fabulous people who make this channel possible. Also known as my sponsors. My first sponsor is Zeal PC, who is coincidentally the provider for switches on both my boards that you see right here. I'm running Helios on these. And these are 65G Xilinx V1s. I'm a big fan, so I'm glad that he is one of my sponsors. He is located in Vancouver, Canada. But right now, I believe he has a sale on his turquoise Telios. If you wanna see, let's actually see what, what group buy. Yeah, Aqua Xilinx switches, I mean. If these switches are something that interests you, definitely Hit him up. There we go. My second sponsor is Novel Keys, this time located in West Virginia in the United States. He has a couple group buys running. I, I, I'm always really impressed by Novel Keys because he manages to handle several group buys. This time's group buy is GMK Taro. 
which I am actually considering buying, even though I can't see purples that well. I am very impressed with the novelties I bought oh so long ago. And as you can see, they're still unopened. I kind of want to start using them. So can't really use them without a Taro set. There's no other purple set really matches this shade. So I'm, I am currently greatly considering this set. Another, another one of his group buys is JTK Classic FC. This is actually ending on a few days, well, in, in, in five days. Um, you'll know that the base set is going for a hundred bucks. Why is it so expensive when it's JTK? It's because it's triple shot, red, white, and black. It's inspired by the Famicom, the Super Famicom. If you guys are familiar with that, that was the Nintendo, Nintendo console from back in the day. I had one of these, but not a Super Famicom. It was a Taiwanese rebrand <laughs> and not even the same colors. I am, red is not a color that I really like. So while I am interested in the triple shotting process, I will probably stay away from this particular group buy. And as I said, he has many group buys. One group buy that I'm interested in is SA Sale. I'm not interested in the key set per se. Like right now it's 55 bucks for the alphas, a hundred for the mods. Holy crap, that's expensive. So 155 all in all just to get in. But yeah, I'm not so interested in the key set that's going on. I'm more interested in the desk mat. Look at that. That looks beautiful to me. I think if I got this, this would replace my current desk mat. Or maybe I'll just put it on top so I can have three desk mats and really dampen out all of these things. Are you drinking lots of grape juice recently? Yes, I am. Well, this is only my, my second glass of grape juice. But yeah, look at that. They have the green one, green high contrast, and the black monochrome. I think I like it enough to buy two of them. And look at that. It's on sale for 14 bucks. I might have to buy both of them. Hmm, hmm, hmm. And that, I believe, is all the group buys currently running on Novel Keys. But yeah, if you guys um, if you guys want to buy anything else on on like novel keys, not just group buy stuff or pre-orders, definitely remember to use discount code Wizard, and you can get five percent off your entire order. Usually, that saves you on tax, sometimes shipping, depends on how small your order is. Like. I ordered a bunch of desk mats recently and because it was so heavy, even using someone else's discount code, I didn't really save that much money on it. My cat's name is The Wizard. <laughs> nice. My next sponsor is Dixie Mac. Dixie Mac is located in Alabama, in the, here in the, in the United States. He is currently running the Botanical GM, the GMK Botanical Group Buy. Look at that. Oh, nice and green. And that's an Iron 165. Here. I just realized I'm not showing all this. Dixie Mech. Oh, one, one thing about Dixie Mech that a lot of people don't actually know about is that if you take both our names if you take the second part of both our names and combine them together, they, they, they come out as Mac Merlin. If you take the first part of both our names, it becomes Dixie Mac. <laughs> but yeah, he is currently running a group by called GMK Botanical. Uh, lots of proxies here. MyKeyboard.eu, DailyClack, and Ilum KB. Um, this set, I believe, is it's more expensive than the previous set from last month. 
119 bucks. I believe it's because it's custom colors and it's a bigger set. I'm not too sure. You got your jungle, succulents, and bamboo. Comes with, you can purchase a Rama keycap and a desk mat as well. Desk mat doesn't really speak to me, unfortunately. But who knows, we got an entire month for this. Aries says, I just got the via port for my Doro to work. Awesome, exactly. <laughs> Dixie says, <laughs> Dixie Mac Merlin. <laughs> Dixie says, has a full kit this month. Last month had a smaller base kit with no numpad. That explains quite a lot, actually. So yeah, if you guys are interested in this, you guys have until the end of the month to purchase this. But one other thing you should know about Dixie Mac, that he's currently running an event called Mech Madness. What is Mech Madness? Mech Madness is basically March Madness for basketball, but instead of basketball, it's mechanical keyboards. Basically, you have three tournaments that are running, one for keycaps, one for keyboards, and one for desk mats. And typically, if, well, it's too late to do your brackets now, but you can definitely follow along. You, you can definitely follow, follow along and see what's happening. Oh, something is moving. I did not intend it for, I did not intend for it to move. Oh look, there's 159. 159 if you're still on stream. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, if you guys want to follow along, definitely check out um, his Instagram page. Look at his stories and vote there. So yeah. Um, Oh my gosh, I'm just forgetting what I'm going to say next. What was I going to say next? Oh yeah, I was going to say that if you guys actually want to follow along and see quote unquote up to date information of who's winning, who's not, and possibly even people in your community who have submitted brackets, tune in to Mechs on Dex on Friday evenings. And they, they have a little show like it's it's really funny because they're obviously in the same place and they're dressed dressed kind of like sports newscasters. <laughs> I thought that, that that was hilarious. <laughs> so I've been watching along every now and then, but they'll be doing this up to, up till the end of this series. And yeah, uh, fortunately, if you already had your bracket, you have chances to win this. Um, as I said, if you're if you haven't done so already, it's already too late. But as Olivia is saying, vote for GMK Merlin. I know it's no, in no one's hands yet, but if you vote for GMK Merlin for Mech, for Mech Madness, I would really appreciate that. <laughs> Here we go. So I was talking about Mechs and Dex. There, it's 8 p.m. Central. Fo follow them. Like I know we were raided by Mechs and Dex earlier, so definitely check them out. My next sponsor is Keep.io, who is also a fellow QMK collaborator. He is most well known for his Iris keyboards, his QFNC, his Levinson, and of quite a few others. But if there is one thing you're going to purchase on his site, there's this one thing you purchase, I highly recommend peel away sockets. And the reason being is Pro Micros are notoriously hard to desolder. And anyone who has to do it, May God have mercy on your soul. So definitely do peel, peel away sockets. They're only $2.49 for an entire strip. Highly recommend. You can get up to 15% off his entire site if you use discount code WIZARD. Oh, and I just realized I forgot to link Dixie Max stuff. Oh no, I don't even have a code for him. There we go. Perfect. Here we go. And Kibayo. There we go. Kibayo is also located here in the U in the United States. So if you're local here, shipping should be fairly quick. Last but not the least, Project Keyboard. Project Keyboard is my newest sponsor of the show. Um, 
Look at that. He's selling quite a few things now. Crytox 205G0. So I got one of his very first batches. I have about half the vial left and I've lubed many a keyboard. I think I could probably do another 20 boards just fine. Yeah, I would highly recommend getting his stuff. This is nice. If I had known he was selling these actually, I probably would have purchased from him instead of going to Canada. Hmm, hmm, hmm. But yeah, other than that, other than that, he's also running a group buy for GMK Ashes, made from Tyson. If you guys don't know who Tyson is, Tyson used to do a lot of Cerakoting for the community. He was the Cerakote master. He now has his first GMK set. GMK Ashes retailing for about 130 bucks. The more I look at this set, the more I want it. But right now, my heart is set on Taro. But, you know, if I have an extra 130 bucks, I may, I may just jump on this. Who knows? Who knows? Like, look at that. That looks so clean. Oh my gosh. Pretty, pretty, pretty. Definitely check them out if you guys have the time. Project keyboards. All right, all right. Let's see. What do we have going on? What do we have going on? Yeah. So this keyboard is now into, now supported by Via. Um, let's see. Who was working on this with me? Who was working on this? Is it Airy? Yeah, Airy. Um, Airy, I would appreciate it if you did my directory structure the same way. So in Via, you would have Doro67, and instead of another directory, you just have another file. Um, that would make it easier for for merges. Like you don't have to worry about the QMK firmware side, but um, just worry about the Via side. So that way we don't clash too much. Miko eats clams. I like clams too, actually, but I prefer oysters. He says, any thoughts on the new canoe? Um, honestly, like the, like, like the aesthetics of the new canoe don't appeal to me at all. Like, I know it's got a bunch of new features. It's even like QMK compatible this time around, but the way it looks, looks so bland to me. And my experience with Percent Studios has been down the drain so far. Um, I've had to fix multiple canoes for people and the Percent Studios Skog Light that I received as my top clack third year anniversary prize is completely broken. So I don't know, I just don't have much, much faith in their ability to produce good PCBs. So as much as I like 65%, as you guys can see, I personally would stay away from it. Also, um, their other canoes, their most recent canoes, have a new PCB that no one seems to know how to program. I got a few pings from Zambumon a, a few weeks ago, and he's like, Merlin, how do I do this? I looked at it, and I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. You are on your own here. Aries says, got it. I'll make it. I'll make a different file. Yeah. Uh, which, which Doro 67 do you have? There are three variants. There's the multi and the, there's the regular. Dixie says, supposedly the new PCB is QMK compatible. That is very true. Aries says, I have the multi. Okay. Um... Ari, since you are working on the multi, I'm actually going to do a little bit more just to chat about things here. Hold on. Because it's not sufficient to do what I just did here. So I'll, I'll just chat a little bit more. 
Here we go. Okay. So Ari, this is specifically for your benefit. Um, the Doro 67 multi is called multi because it supports mul multiple layouts. That's why it's called the multi. So what you need to do is you actually need to support multiple layouts on it. And the way to do that is for example, for example, if you have a split space here, um, you need to do something like this. Let's see. Okay. Oh. Wilba prefers two keys right here. Oh, shoots. Okay. So what you need to do here, I am assuming for the multi, is that this actually goes up to 15. Like so. So assuming this is how it is, 0, 13, 0, 14. One additional attribute that you have to do is you need to populate the bottom right, which would be this guy right here. And the and you populate it the same way you did with the row and column, except this time it's the group and the option. Like so. Okay. So what that means is you want the base case, which is what this board is right here, as group zero, option zero. The next one, which is these guys, this set of keys, you want to set them both to group zero, because it's the backspace group, option one, like so. And you have to do that for everything as well. Like for example, yeah, for example, let's do this. If you're gonna do the left shift right here, you want, it's 1.25 and one. Here we go, right? Like this. Uh, okay, so Wilba is very, very specific on this. He wants you to label them from top to bottom, left to right. So the next group in this would actually be the this guy right here. So I, I'm not gonna do like, like the ISO, but just consider this group one, option zero, and the left key would be group two, option one, like so. What? Like so, and you just have to do it for all of the keys that have multiple layouts. And what do you need to do next? What do you need to do next? gonna talk about this relatively briefly but here so it's gonna be like the same process you download that same JSON file but what you want to do next is what's the board I did here we go so you copy and paste it right you copy and paste that JSON file everything is the same the difference is you need to add a layouts property like so. Then you need to put a labels property and you have to list it in order as I said earlier. Backspace, enter key, left shift, right shift, and then bottom row. So you have to have an array for like each of these groups. So each of the groups are separate. So each of the groups is represented by one array. The first item in the array has to be the label. So this is the backspace array, the enter key array, left shift array, right shift and bottom row. And then each of each of the following options will be the option numbers in that KLE. So this would be option zero, option one, so forth and so on. That's what you have to do. For the Doro 67, I didn't actually have any options because it was pretty much a one layout type board so I was fortunate on that. Via support is super easy on, on like hot swaps because of that. But 
idea for multiple layout boards such as the DZ60 which has like what 16 different layouts it's hell it's honestly hell because you have so many to like support here let me show you the worst one that I've had to do so far the worst one I've had to do so far is actually show you the worst one I've had to do is the KBD 75 v2 version 2 this was horrible this this made me cry look for those not familiar with the KBD 75 version 2 it is exactly the same as the KBD 75 version 1 except it has an additional layout. It allows you to put a numpad on. So if you were to look that up on KBD75, I'm mean KBD fans right now, you are able to put in, there you go, see that? All right, great, you can't click on it. Come on, why can't you click on it? Oh, there we go. See? So you have your regular layout, which you would expect for 75%. Then you have the numpad layout, where everything is moved over to the left for a bit. See? So you're sacrificing your sub your sub your subtraction and your addition sign. You're sacrificing your two brackets, your semicolon and your quotation, your less than, greater than signs, all that in favor of the numpad. See? So what that looks like for via support is crazy. Like this is currently in PR right now, but look, this is what I had to do. It's just whack. It's it's a whack job right there. So this is probably the most confusing via layout that I've ever had to do. And hopefully Wilba merges it soon. Because every now and then I get people asking me, hey Merlin. Is KBD 75 supported? I can't flash my board. Well, sorry guys, but to get via, you still need to be able to flash your board. So there's really no way around that flashing process, unfortunately. Uh, I finished my second glass. Let me pour myself. Another little glass. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes from there. So just me or did my stream freeze for a few seconds there? <laughs> Harry says, got it, looks simple enough. Yeah, um, if you need help, make sure you ping me. I'll be glad to help out. You know, like this board already has so many issues on its own. Is it still frozen? You guys see my hands moving? What am I drinking? I am drinking a 10 year tawny from, let's see. Let, let me just make that command. Yellowtail Rosé and a Quinta das Carvalhas 10-year tawny port. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan of sweeter drinks, just as long as it's not too sweet. Yeah. All right. I'm actually fairly curious about some... Let's see, what can I do here? <laughs> it's been a while since I have typed on, on, on SA. So I kind of want to do some typing tests. 
do they have honey? Honeywell? Yes, they do. They got Honeywell. Perfect. Okay. I want to see, like, this is one of my favorite boards, but I've, I don't remember doing a typing test on it. Let's pause the music a bit. You guys can listen to my sounds of essay on an integrated plate. Milk says, uh, I'm, I'm going to butcher that name. Larchivisti. <laughs> Larchi Visti <laughs> River Salties has been my drink lately. <laughs> yeah, sorry man, I sorry for butchering. I also don't know what that is, so I'm gonna Google that really quick. It is a the sixty dollar bottle of wine. Very nice. What is it? Is it a blend? Yeah, I, I don't know what kind of wine this is. Oh yeah, it is. It's a blend from France. Interesting. Very nice. Larchivisti River Salties. Yep. There's my butchering of the French word. If anyone speaks French, I sincerely apologize. All right, all right, let's see. Let's see if I can type on this. S-A. Oh, I see what's happening. It's my stupid cable is touching, touching the TX-75. Let's see. Take out the TX-75. Milk works with a lot of wine, so I drink a bunch of stuff, and that bottle is fantastic, especially if you like sipping fortified wines. Okay, I may, I may have to try that in the near future. Why is that first word turning red? Okay, here, let's do this. Let's stretch it out a bit. Uh. As if I haven't been typing all day. <laughs> but I haven't been typing all day on an SA profile key set. So we'll see. We'll see. Finger exercises. Finger exercises. So back in high school, I used to play saxophone. And my teacher used to be like, all right, guys, shake your fingers out. Shake your fingers out. So you can stretch them out and all that. I've forgotten all of the exercises that he showed us, but you know, I try to do some form of finger stretches. I no longer play the saxophone, but I still remember all of the finger positions. At least I think I do. There we go. Let's do this. I've lost my place. <laughs> Hundred fourteen. Okay, that sucks. Okay, let's try again. I I don't like this color. I'm gonna have to change the theme so I can actually see it. Better. Let's try nineteen seventy six. That's a good one. One of my favorite colorways. Are you typing? I can't hear it. You can't hear it because I'm using Helios. Unlubed Helios, might I add. Nine Walker says, are these Xylans? No, they are not. They are Helios. Helios. The reason why, why I picked Helios is because I personally feel that integrated plate is a little harsh. And I've typed... Like, I think linears work best for integrated plate, but since this was my very first integrated plate board, I wanted to not hate it. 
So I picked Helios. Oh, here it goes. <laughs> Let's try that again. <laughs> Oh man, I'm either too drunk or or like or, or like SA doesn't work for me. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna aim for for accuracy. so much for accuracy <laughs> man okay to be fair to be fair I used to have essay on this and I achieved similar results so I am gonna blame all of my I'm gonna blame all of my failures on the fact that I'm using SA. But, you know, um, it's, it's weird because now I'm really hearing it. These are stock Helios. I did not lube them at all. No stem lube, no spring lube. And as I was typing, I could actually hear some of that spring crunch. Milk says, did I ever find that screw? No, I did not. I did not, but I also haven't been looking. So to my, to my defense, maybe one day I will find it. You know, I kind of like Max Keys SA more than I like Signature Plastics. Because Max Keys has this more matted look. Yeah, this is probably one of the SA sets that I like to keep. But the pro problem with Max Keys is that they don't have very much support. Look at my rightmost row. Normally, you want home and page up page down but max keys did not have that support so i had to do it this way home and page up page down yeah all right let's see um um, 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 what should I do next? What should I do next, guys? Is anyone even watching? Yes, there are, there are people watching. That's good. <laughs> All right. Um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much done. Pretty much done with what I want to do. Um, I'll probably take some time to, to write my my pull requests so that they make sense. I also need to come up with an appropriate vendor ID and product ID. The vendor ID and product ID that I, that I picked was just something that Zark gave me. I kind of want to make it more, I want to make it match what the actual vendor is, which is Backprop Studios. So maybe I'll do like BS or something, who knows will require a little more research on my part but if any of you guys have a dolch i mean have a doro 67 um st stay tuned you will have via support for this soon so yeah um thanks for watching guys here let's see i've been told that i should use this opportunity to raid people 
So I will look around. Who should I raid? Who should I raid? Oh, yeah. My coworker today had mentioned that he was streaming tonight. So let's see what his channel is all about. Ooh, okay. My coworker streams video games and he's currently streaming Devil May Cry 5. Let's say. Let's go raid him. Let's go raid him. If you guys are interested in Devil May Cry 5 playthrough, de definitely check it out. Def definitely check it out. But yeah. Thanks guys for all of your support. My next stream will be this coming Saturday. I will be rebuilding. Rebuilding this guy right here. This guy. The KBD 67 RGB Mark II. And why are we re rebuilding it? It's because my V1 PCB is finally starting to die. Um, I've already secured a V2 PCB, one that has ESD protection and back to the Atmega 32U4. So I'm hoping that that will give me better performance. If you guys caught my Dolch Pack stream, I was using this exact board as my main keyboard for the day, and it died not once, not twice, but four times on stream. So yeah, it's practically unusable. So I, I just gotta rebuild it. Also, I don't have enough screws. As nice as this board looks, it is missing screws connecting the PCB to the plate. So that is something that will need to be fixed as well. But yeah. Let's see, how does this raid channel thing work? Pick a live channel. This is my coworker. Be good to him guys, and hopefully you guys like watching Devil May Cry. Thanks guys, I'll see you on Saturday. Here we go, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, woo! Ciao guys, have a good rest of your week.